I'm Nina Dudnick. I am the founder and CEO of Seeding Labs, which is an NGO based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And the goal is to help scientists at universities in the developing world do first-class research. Um, I very strongly believe in the power of scientific research. I've seen the impact that it has. It, not just in terms of giving people an education that helps you really address and identify solvable problems in the world, but the, it spins off applications that help millions of people from medicines to seeds to computer technology and it ultimately spins off whole new industries that can really change an economy in an entire nation. Okay, great. Um, and now if you could sort of talk a little bit about your, your background, tell us where you're from and um, what you did before you became you know, the CEO and, um, and also a little bit about... Um, in fact, let's just go with that. <laughs> I decided I wanted to become a geneticist at the ripe old age of 13. And for some reason, to me, the thing that was really evocative was actually uh, genetics and agriculture. And that ended up taking me to West Africa, where I worked in what I think was possibly the only functioning molecular scale lab in the country, the Ivory Coast. And that was where I really saw how science and having the opportunity to do something really advanced changed people's lives. It changed the education of the people working in the labs. Um, there were two technicians who worked in that lab. They'd never finished high school, and they were teaching me molecular biology. And then I came back to the U.S. and found that my colleagues in science in the U.S. really never knew these colleagues of theirs halfway around the world. And that when people did talk about the diseases or other issues facing the developing world, it was always in this manner of exporting a solution. And I knew that there were these brilliant scientists working in all of these countries. They just didn't have the resources to really do the best level of science. So what is it that, um, say, stops somebody who is born in, say, Kenya or Ivory Coast, mm -hmm. uh, aged 13, becoming the geneticist that you did? Um, part of it is, you know, it's, it's a lack of access to the things that we take for granted that are required. So first of all, there's a huge lack of access to information. Um, I had the benefit of an incredible public library system, which a lot of people don't have. Um, but once you get higher and higher in the educational system, science is a very expensive thing to do. It's very equipment intensive. And that's led to the polarization of the scientific community, where only in places where you can really afford incredible apparatuses can you actually do research. And so, so anyone who's really interested in becoming a scientist in the developing world either has to do incredibly limited work, limited purely by the tools at hand, or they have to emigrate to get a better education. And in most cases, they don't go home again. And so you're constantly losing the best educated people and the people who could really be solving the important questions. OK. And what kind of, uh, what kind of work does, uh, does Seeding Labs do? What kind of equipment do you, do you work with? Primarily right now, it's for life sciences and chemistry, a little bit of physics. Um, and the goal is to ultimately change people's horizons about what kinds of questions they could be answering. But the tools are the first step. And so we connect scientists at private sector companies in the US, universities. They take their surplus but still working equipment. We help, they help us match it up to scientists at universities abroad. And by that, we're forming a natural connection between those two people. And so now we can connect them for training programs, exchange programs in both directions, where they get to meet colleagues they would never otherwise meet, learn about new techniques, learn about new questions to ask. And what, uh, what, what successes have you had so far? You know, what, what work have you sort of done already? What have you got under your belt? <laughs> Actually, we've equipped labs in 16 countries so far, in Latin America, in the Caribbean, and in Africa. And the scientists are training thousands of students, about 4,000 right now. And they've published papers in the highest level journals in the world. So their work is now being known in their field. Two of them have got patents based on their research. Um, one of our scientists in Argentina developed a new optimized diagnostic test for multi-drug resistant tuberculosis. And the Argentinian Public Health Service is using that. Um, and so it's really, it's really spanning that whole level from teaching to publishing to applications that are out in the field helping people. Great. Cool. That's it. All right.